Hello, everyone. Hi, Cheryl Arkell here. Hi, everyone. Hello. What are you reading? It's uh, what are you reading time? Um, I'm still in San Francisco, but this is my last week. So I'm going to be back in Sydney shortly and Jane and I are going to be doing What Are You Reading coming up very soon. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, it's starting to get warm in San Francisco, which is really nice, and it's also daylight saving here. Uh, so, yeah, so I'll be walking straight into autumn and the end of daylight saving, so that's what's going to happen. Anyway, what are you reading? You know how this works. I tell you what we're reading. You tell me what you're reading. Um, and yeah, let's have a conversation. Okay, so first book up today. What have we got? What have we got? Um, Dex, so we're going to put up the first book. Oh, Ali Lowe. That's, um, that's our first book. Uh, and we love Ali. I mean, I know you all love Ali. Everybody loves Ali. Uh, and uh, she is a good friend to better reading, as we all know. But and she, this is her new book, and it's called The School Run. And it's set in a coastal town, um, Pacific Pines, um, and we're introduced to some neighbours and uh, all these things happen. It's, you know, she writes beautiful relationship. But what happens here is that a boy gets struck and he gets, there's a hit and run, and it's the scandals and the secrets, and it's really compelling um, storytelling. She's a great storyteller. Um, and some of you might have already read it. And so if you have the new Ali Lowe, it's called The School Run, let me know. Okay, Carolyn says hi. Hi, Carolyn. Welcome. Carolyn's always reading a lot. Um, and oh, Carolyn finally got to read The Lincoln Highway by Amor Towles. Yes, that is, that has been out a few years ago, right? Um, but as we say here, always, it's new until you read it, right? Um, and uh, what uh, Carolyn says, it has a near magical, he, well, uh, the author himself, Amor, has a near magical gift for storytelling. Uh, his ability to construct an, a cast of characters at once um, and they're flawed, lovable and fascinating. He really is a wonderful storyteller. Um, and Carolyn says it's a wonderful read, um, loved it, and even though it's a big book, it's over 500 pages, she couldn't put it down. Thank you for sharing that, Carolyn, and welcome today. Uh, Sharon says hi. Hi, Sharon. Um, Sally Smith says hi, and she's reading The Tilt by Chris Hammer. Well, we all love Chris Hammer, um, and The Tilt is his latest book. Uh, what else have we got? Um, Meryl is reading all, Audrey's Gone, um, AWOL, and enjoying it. Um, thanks, Meryl, for sharing that. Helen, hi, Cheryl, reading An Eye for an Eye by MJ Aldridge, um, and that's um, Helen. Sharon enjoyed watching Kathy Lett and Jane last night. Segway, segway, let's put up the new Kathy Lett book. Um, everybody enjoyed that. It's called The Revenge Club um, and it was great fun, wasn't it? I mean, you know, you've got Jane um, and Kathy, and Kathy's always full of energy. I think she's actually in Australia at the moment, uh, so we're hoping to get her in the office shortly uh, when I get back. Um, and uh, anyway, yeah, it was a really good event. So for those of you that don't know, we have events every Wednesday night at 8 p.m., um, Australian Eastern Time, uh, and we have so many, so many fabulous authors, uh, and usually they're in conversation with someone. So I'm really glad you enjoy that, Sharon. And that's the new book, The Revenge Club, The Revenge Club by Kathy Lett. Okay, Jill says hi to everyone. Yvonne says hi, Cheryl. I'm reading The Chocolate Factory by Mary Lou Stevens and loving it. Well, um, Mary Lou, of course, is a friend of Better Reading. She's often um, watching um, and participating in What Are You Reading? So for those of you who've just joined us, um, Cheryl Eichel, what are you reading? I'm still in San Francisco, but it's my last week. So I'll be back in Sydney soon and we'll be broadcasting from the office. Jane has just finished The Good Teacher by R.M. Anderson and she says it's a good read. That's Jane Harvey. Kate says hi and is currently reading What Happened to Nina. Uh, Wendy says, welcome back, Cheryl. And I'm reading The Apple Tree Yard by uh, Louise Doherty. Um, and The Coast by Eleanor Limpkett. Limp, 
Kurt, I think that's pronounced limperate, Kurt. Um, Valerie is reading Jackie French's new novel, The, C the Sea Captain's Wife. Um, isn't, isn't Jackie just such a great writer um, and, again, is loved by um, many people, many, many. Um, and she used to, well, she writes children's books, she writes YA books and she writes adult books as well. Okay, what else have we got? Body of Lies by Sarah Bailey. That's what we've been reading. I love Sarah. And this is um, a car crash victim, clings to life and is rushed to hospital but can't be saved. Hours later, her corpse is stolen from the morgue. I mean, she's such a good writer. Um, she's got a great voice um, and this is gripping. It's a white knuckle thriller. And you'll remember that Sarah has also written The Dark Lake and The Housemate. Uh, so let me know if you've read any of Sarah Bailey's. Okay, Sue has just finished uh, The Housemaid by Frieda McFadden. Again, that was out a couple of years ago um, and very popular at the time. I think um, Frieda was an editor herself or a publisher that came to writing. Um, but, you know, it's wonderful that people read books for the first time two or three years after they're published. Um, Sue is also reading The Housemaid's Secret, the second book in the series, and it's a great page turner. Uh, Linda is reading Soldier Sailor by Claire Kilroy, an intense and beautifully written book. Thanks, Linda. Kaz, hi, Kaz. Kaz is still reading The Other Bridget. It's a great read. That's Rachel Johns, um, who we absolutely adore. Uh, what else have we got? Sally, um, last night with Jane and Kathy was fabulous. Thank you for that feedback. They're both just high energy woman, women. Kathy Led is just so funny and so fantastic. And I think that combination with Jane was just great, that conversation. Um, okay, uh, Din, uh, Dinmara uh, is reading uh, D. Edward by Anne um, Napolitano after, and uh, she also read um, hello, beautiful, and uh, very emotional as well. Okay, and also I think you might be new to us, uh, Dinamara, and I hope I've pronounced your name correctly. Okay, Ruth, Ruth is not new. I've seen you there before. Ruth has just finished Jane's book, Tilda is Visible. Segway, let's put that up. Um, and now reading Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ning. Uh, that's fantastic. Tilda is Visible is our very own Jane Tara's book um, and uh, people are reading it and loving it. And actually, I think Jane's uh, going around the country today. I think she's going rural New South Wales and visiting bookshops, which is wonderful. Meredith says, hi, Cheryl, I'm reading and loving Gone by Glenna Thomas. Well, another segue. I had a wonderful chat with Glenna a couple of weeks ago Um via Zoom. So I was here in San Francisco and she, I think she was in Melbourne. Anyway, um, she um, she's written this book. It's fantastic. The podcast is out now if you want to listen to how she came to writing. Actually, it was really quite funny because I don't know if I told you this the last time we spoke, but, you know, Glenna and I were setting up the, um, the Zoom, um, uh, you know, just getting started on Zoom. And she, um, I said, oh, where are you? And she told me where she was. I think it was Melbourne. I can't remember now. Um, and I said, oh, I'm in San Francisco. And she said, oh, you wish. I said, no, <laughs> I do wish, um, but I am here. And she was so surprised that I was in San Francisco and she was in Australia. It was very funny, actually. But anyway, the podcast is great um, and the book is good too. It's called Gone and it's by Glenda Thomas. Okay, Julie says, hi, Cheryl, I'm reading Jackie French's book, The Sea Captain's Wife, um, and I think most people are loving that, and I think you will too, Julie. Um, Cassie's still reading The Other Bridget. Um, I think I read that, um, and that's by Rachel Johns. Uh, Ivana is reading The Orphans by Fiona McIntosh. Really enjoying that. Don't want to put it down at night, but I get too sleepy. Don't you, I mean, sometimes when you're reading a book and you just can't part with it, it's very hard. I was, I went to Berkeley today on BART, which is the train system here in San Francisco. Anyway, um, and I was reading um, Fiona McFarlane had written a short story for The New Yorker. Um, and my friend uh, who lives here read it and said, Cheryl, I think you'll love this short story. Published in The New Yorker, Fiona McFarlane is an Australian writer. Um, and, you know, I think it 
she's written two books, two or three books maybe. I can't remember. I should have looked that up. But anyway, here I am on the train, and this is going back to what you're saying about Fiona McIntosh. I almost missed my stop because it was so compelling, the short story, and it was kind of suspenseful um, in a way, but it wasn't a crime story at all. And honestly, the train station came up and I knew I had to get off, but I didn't want to put the magazine down, the New Yorker down. Anyway, that's what Great Story does, right? Um, okay. Um, oh, so uh, Dinamara said she's not new to the group, um, but new to live chat. Well, welcome. And we're very happy to have you on live chat. And as I said, Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern um, Standard Time. Okay, what else are we reading? We're reading we're reading Small Hours by Bobby Palmer. Um, and uh, if you stood before sunrise in this wild old place, and have a look at that cover, it's so beautiful, uh, looking through the trees into the gardens, here's what you'd see, a father, a son, and a fox standing between them. It's the new novel by Bobby Palmer, and he is the author of the critically acclaimed debut um, book, Isaac and the Egg, which I know many of you read, and this is his new book. Okay, Kaz um, just put hold until it is visible at the library. Well, I hope you get a copy soon. Uh, Teresa is just finishing her heart for a compass by Sarah, the Duchess of York. Oh, wow, interesting. A surprisingly good read, well-written and researched and easy reading. Oh, thanks for that, Teresa. That's certainly something that hasn't been on my radar, so that's good to know. Um, okay. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. Tanya, hi, Cheryl. I've just finished Jane's lovely book, Tilda is Visible. I've also just finished listening to What Happened to Nina by Dervla McTiernan, another great book. So I love the fact that Tanya is listening to audiobooks and maybe reading at the same time. Do you do both, Tanya? Anyway, let me know. Um, so here we are. We've got so much to talk about today. What else have we got coming up? We've got The Revenge Club by Cathy Lett, which we spoke about, and uh, there it is, and Fiona Lowe, and we love Fiona. This is uh, Fiona's new book. It's a, There's a terrible crash, but things don't add up. Worlds converge and these two women's lives are torn apart with a devastating accident and um, it just uncovers a whole web of lies. It's gripping, it's uh, thought-provoking um, and it's a mystery in a way and it's by our very own Fiona Lowe. We've got so many wonderful Australian writers. I mean, I know we often talk about that, but we do. Um, uh so that's coming up. What else have we got, Dex? We've got we've got what's coming up next. Uh, oh, good, good half gone by Taryn Fisher. There it is. That's up. Um, and so Iris saw her twin sister Piper get kidnapped. So why does no one believe her? Now she's an adult, and Iris wants to know one thing: the proof. And the police still won't help. This is such a good book, um, and it's it's got a really nice pace. And it's, you know, you're going to be guessing right to the very end. It's really very, very good. Um, that's Taryn Fisher and the book is called Good Half Gone. Now, the next book we've got is um, Nikki French um, and Has Anyone Seen Charlotte Salter? Um, well, obviously, everyone loves Nikki French um, and this is a story about um, recently made redundant from a marriage, motherhood and career, this woman. She's a journalist. Her name is Rachel. She finally has the time to land the story of the year. But the psychological thriller is about class, corruption, love, loyalty, and vindication of truth and justice. Um, and there's a really nice dog in there called Blue. Uh, there's a lot of books out there at the moment about women, um, women growing older, women losing their jobs, women losing friendships, women losing other friends. You know, there's so much happening. Um, and I wonder, I wonder whether I can ask you the question, do you like to, as a reader, as a fiction reader, of course, do you like to read about women that you can relate to, about women, you know, your age, um, you know, no matter what age you are? But I'm seeing this trend, like, you know, um, uh, the Kathy Lett book, um, Jane's book, there's, and, you know, many writers have been um, writing about women, older women, 
I really enjoy it because, you know, um, it's something that I can identify with. I feel as though it gives women a voice. Um, so tell me what you think about that because uh, I think that's interesting and tell me are you drawn to those sorts of books. I know that all of you read a wide range of books but I wonder um, if you're drawn to that um, as people are. Valerie said she reads and listens to two different books um, at the same time. It's a great way to get through books. Good on you, um, Valerie. Um, anyway, so um, this is What Are You Reading? Cheryl Arkell. I'm actually in San Francisco my last week here. I'll be home soon and we'll be going um, live for uh, this segment from the office. Um, Ruth said she's never read Nikki French, but um, she would she would like to, and psychological thrillers. Um, but she does like psychological thrillers, so maybe you need to check her out. You really do, actually. She's been, it's a re really well-written books, absolutely. Um, anyone else has read uh, Nikki French that would like to recommend one to Ruth? Um, please do so. Um, Helen, absolutely love reading about people I can strongly identify with. I agree with that too, Helen. Um, there is there is something about reading. I mean, you know, of course I like to read about young people as well, but um, there is something about reading um, characters that you can identify with for sure. Okay, what else is happening out there in the world? Um, let me see. I think I'm all through the books that I have to talk to you today. Um, and you know that the podcast is out. Do you know, with our podcasts, we, I think, are up to 500, over 500 podcasts, which is really quite incredible. Anyway, and some of the authors are doubled, so you'll hear some authors, you know, twice or three times, but mainly it's single authors. And do you know today, today I re recorded a podcast um, and the author that I spoke with, she was really incredible. And she was talking about how she came to writing and she came later to writing and she's writing about women her age. But she, actually, can you put up the link to that book for me, Dex, please? Um, but she told me that she, she was an academic and she'd had a career as being a journalist, an academic, whatever, and she was driving home one day listening to the book show. Remember the book show that used to be on the ABC? And she was doing that and she loved the show so much and she loved hearing about authors that she decided she wanted to write a book. Um, so I think that's really, really interesting. Anyway, I, um, I said to her, it is, you know, I've recorded over 500 podcasts and every single author virtually has a different story of how they came to writing. It's just so incredible, isn't that? Like, and every time I speak to an author on a podcast, I learn something. Anyway, if you listen, every time you listen to a podcast, you're going to learn something as well. All right, now let me just get back to some of these comment, uh, comments. Helen said, yes, she absolutely loves reading about people that she can identify with. Kerry, listen to Kathy Lett last night. I find I reflect on how much things have changed since the 50s. We, not might, not might, we may not be there yet, but things are much better. Yeah, that's true, actually. Well, I guess life for most people is much better. Um, and that's really insightful, Kerry. Thank you. Um, uh, so, um, oh, Joy said she read and really enjoyed Tilda is Visible. Uh, Deborah, yes, definitely like to read about people I can relate to. It's lovely that middle-aged ladies are featuring more lately. I agree with that too because we're here, we're around, we're the biggest group of readers um, and, of course, you know, we've got stories. All of us have got stories. Um, Helen says, Ruth Friend, um, oh, she's apart from the latest one, she's uh, recommending a book, um, gosh, Nikki French book. Um, the Favour is my favourite, but I can highly recommend all, especially uh, the Frida series. So there you go. That's a tip, Ruth. Uh, Anne Miller says she finished What Happened to Nina by Dervila McTiernan. Loved it. Now reading Body of Lies by Sarah Bailey. Oh, well, they're, they're two books that we have loved. I love Dervila. She's such a wonderful writer. She's an Irish-born um, writer and lived in Ireland for quite some 
time and then moved to Australia. And now she lives in Western Australia. I think she lives in Perth. Um, Wendy says, it's great to read um, of interesting women of our age, I think, good, strong and interesting people of any age, really. I read a physical book and an audio book at the same time too. Wow, there you go. I mean, honestly, I am constantly impressed by you guys. Um, Meredith says she loves all Nikki French books. They are a husband and wife team. That's right, they are too. And I have interviewed them. So it's Nikki Gerard and Sean French. Thanks for reminding me of that, um, Meredith. And also, too, I just find that amazing when two authors write together and seem to have the same voice. It's extraordinary. But anyway, they do. Um, and chatting with them, actually, go find that podcast because it was really interesting. Maybe we can put um, put the link up there. Uh, it was Trish Bolton who I spoke to today about her career in writing and her being inspired to write a fiction book by listening to ABC's The Book Show. Incredible. I just love that story. Um, that was the first time that I'd heard that that's what in, has inspired her as a writer. Like I, that hasn't um, come up in conversation before. It's incredible. Anyway, uh, Kerry says uh, that she has four brothers. My sister-in-law tells me I'm fine. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> just born the wrong sex. Okay. Thanks for that, Kerry. All right, what have we got? Um, uh, Ruth says, thanks for the recommendations. Oh, Hanadi. Hi, Hanadi. Hanadi is reading and loving Always Will Be by Michaela Saunders, spe um, specifically fiction short stories, so much in Indigenous cultures. Absolutely. And I think she's doing some work around the programming of the Melbourne Writers Festival too, Hanadi. So um, look, look out for her. Very, very interesting author. Um, Sally says, I love reading books by female authors about mature women living their best life absolutely and aren't we all living our best life okay well on that note i'm going to um love you and leave you because i'm living my best life here in san francisco um as i said last week here i'll be back in the office soon um thank you to everybody that's joined us always love your comments um it's always very insightful love the fact that you're sharing and you can continue to chat with each other in comments that's fine um, and that's it from me and I will see you in a couple of weeks. Take care.